What you're going to be doing here at university is developing analytical skills. Probably, I think, the key skill that you need to take into the marketplace with you. Um, most bosses, most employers will be looking for an employee who can analyse, maintain a sense of distance, be objective. Really, if you're thinking about your analytical skills, what you're doing is you're honing your ability to convey information, to collate information and keep a kind of a sense of overview, to be objective about that information. It's a skill I think you develop. I think some people are better at it than others, but I absolutely think over three years, they are skills which you can hone and you can evolve. And often it's just a way of ordering your thinking and a way of thinking about gathering information. What academic skills are really all about is about critical thinking, objective critical thinking. When people say critical thinking, they often think just negative, and that's not the case. It's really about maintaining a sense of objectivity and distance and divorcing yourself from that artefact, phenomenon, or whatever is topic it is that you're looking into. Really, a good researcher is someone who can distill large pieces of information search through that to find the story they need to make sense of the artefact they've been given to analyse. What I think any researcher should be really is adaptable but also creative and I think certainly someone who's able to spot gaps, trends, absences, patterns and sometimes join those dots to create a story. So what we do here and certainly I think it's probably one of the most important things within academia is we try to think about context, which is the most difficult thing for students coming in the door to get their heads around. Context is often the one thing I think that students fail to include in their essays. Um, if you can imagine telling a joke without a context to your friends, your friends know who you are, they know the situation you're referring to, they know the emphasis of the humour that you're using, and they know whether it's offensive or not, or whether it's a valid statement about something, usually designed to make you laugh or make them laugh. Once the, 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 the kind of readership or the viewership or your friends know all that information, which they will do innately because they understand the context, then the joke can be funny. So writing an essay without context is like telling a joke without context. It often seems odd and meaningless and strange. So really context is all important and context I feel is where the most work can be done. I think context is really important in supplying rationale in terms of giving you a sense of perspective, providing a direction, pointing out where to aim and where to write towards. Now of course context today is all important. We live in a social networking world where information passes at an incredibly fast rate, is often unchecked, is often unproved. Uh, is often casual, often throwaway, sometimes depthless, sometimes completely incorrect. So as a result, our job as academics really is to try and break that cycle down. If you think about it, an academic's job is to be honest. It's about integrity and it's about keeping together a narrative that can be trustworthy and can be seen to be trustworthy. I don't think it's overstating it to say that really an academic's job is truth. Your job is to find the truth, basing yours on facts or credible opinion from someone else who has esteem, who is regarded as credible. The thing with context, I think it's all important to bear in mind, is why would anyone give you good marks, for example, if you don't actually know what you're talking about? You present in an effectively meaningless piece of work. Find out about what you're going to write about. Why should anyone want to read about? what you've got to say if you don't know about your subject. I often refer to the Ernest Hemingway idea of the iceberg. Um, he says that a good piece of writing doesn't have to include everything you know about a subject, but it's what you leave out that's important. And the iceberg comes into it. So when you look at an iceberg, it, you see the, the, maybe the first eighth of the thing. The rest of the iceberg lies beneath. And that's the knowledge of everything that you know about that subject, but you only put into the actual piece of writing the tip the top part, but no, that top part would not exist without the rest of that information. When you do that, you set up an intelligent gap. What you don't include demonstrates to the reader that you know what you're talking about. Let's just say you're right about, I don't know, Star Wars, for example. Most people have seen a Star Wars film. 
most people are aware that Star Wars is a thing. A better, more readable, more credible piece is going to be built on knowledge. You know, bluffing only goes so far. Someone who knows about Star Wars um, will know all the key points of that. They'll know why it's important and they'll hope that you as the writer will too. If you get names wrong, if you get dates wrong, if you get the key aspects of the franchise wrong, then the reader will soon sniff that out and then start to look for other errors. And then you've lost, tr you've lost trust. You've lost the trust of the reader and that's very, very important. If you don't put in the foundations, the building block information, which you should be credible and well researched, then ultimately what follows on afterwards will be heavily compromised. A piece of writing that understands the subject fully and has something to say about it from a position of knowledge will always stand out. Now, there is a big difference between knowing something is there, being aware of it and knowing about it. And that's often what context will provide you with. A lot of people can point to something and say, yeah, I've seen a Star Wars film. I know what happens in those things. But do you know who produced it? Who directed it? When it was originally made? The conditions for its kind of, its inception? Why has it kind of managed to last all these years? The other things are, you know, uh, industrial situation. Who are the directors? Who are the producers? Who are the distributors? Who are the networks of power involved behind it? Who are the writers? All of these names and knowledge of all of this will help you draw meaning out of a story and find an angle for you to focus on. Remember, what is the history? What's the where, the when, the how? Very important. Most details can sometimes be swept to one side. They're nearly always assumed by students and kind of, kind of smoothed over without any kind of credibility or focus attached to them. Remember, everything you write about will have a history. Even if it's a new phenomenon, everything will have a history. Everything. The people that make it, the distribution networks, the people, the, the, the companies that make something, everything has a history. Everything can be kind of researched. Everything. It might be hard to find sometimes, um, but it undoubtedly exists. It is your job to find that past. It is your job to locate that history. Most people think a degree is an IQ test, and that's not the case. We're not really interested in what you know now. We're interested in what you can find, and then how you've constructed a position to inform your statement. People assume it is. They kind of come in the position that you're being tested on how brilliant you are. You're being tested on how much research you can find, and the quality and the depth of your research, and how that can then inform your position. There are ways to start this process. I think sometimes um, it might seem a bit of a mountain, you know, when you start anything. I know when I start something, I don't know anything about it. I'm there going, well, what is this thing? Let's just say it's Star Wars. Well, where do I start? Where do I begin to look at what Star Wars is? The process itself of research does take time. Researching a context takes a lot of time because often you're defining the boundaries. Successful degrees are built on endeavour. Uh, they're built on hard work and diligence. It takes time to assemble a body of knowledge. It also takes a skill to work through that knowledge and to edit it into a shape that you know is going to benefit your, your debate or your argument. This takes time. It takes hard work. It takes kind of going up and down a few dark alleyways to find what you need. But that's part of the process. I think a lot of people work on the basis that we go for a click and find it mentality. That's not how it works. It requires a degree of creativity from you. Most people see academia about hard theories. Uh, that's fine, and there are hard theories that we will talk about across an academic degree. But really, it's about where those theories sit in a particular context. Remember, it's going back to the joke. If the context is missing, then the theory is meaningless. It's just a floating theory. Who cares? But if you put it in a context, then it has meaning. Contexts are often the most difficult part of the work, but I find they can be the most rewarding. Because you find the glue, you find the, the, the impetus. Um, really, it supplies a rationale, as I say. The, the very specific address of your narrative defines pitch and defines the quality of that narrative. It gives your writing perspective and it gives you authority. Now, how do we do this? Well, there are several ways to approach this. I've been using this for a while and it sort of works okay. Um, certainly if you're at the very beginning of a process and you're feeling overwhelmed, I mean, I call it RPI. What is it? R simply means reviews, features, uh, critical statements. 
um, leaders, those kind of things, really journalistic pieces of information. What they do is they kind of tell you about what a thing is. I mean, I, I, yeah, you start on Wikipedia maybe, you can start on IMDB, but I certainly won't want to stay there. That would be my kind of doorway into a much larger and deeper pool of knowledge. P means simply people, contributors. You can talk about Star Wars. You're not going to talk about Luke Skywalker. You're going to talk about George Lucas. You're going to talk about J.J. Abrams. You're going to talk about Kathleen Kennedy. These are all key names, but also the people that help generate meaning. Maybe the writers of Star Wars are worth thinking about. Set designers, musicians, anything which you think is going to kind of set up a narrative. And I, institutions. Simply that's studios, companies, uh, political bodies, socio-cultural political bodies, uh, people that make the stuff that are organisations. Most media is about either authorship, technology or organisation. It's about institutions. I mean institutions, I don't mean asylums, I mean, yeah, companies, gatherings of talent, uh, business interests, corporate interests, networks, distributions. All of these things take a while to research and they might seem a bit dry, but that's really where the bulk of it lies. That's really the, the heart of it. RPI, reviews, people, institutions. See, once you've drilled down and you've researched those, um, and take each of those names, and each stage you find and research that and drill down, you start to find your own narrative. Um, and I always use the Peter Tosh quote. Peter Tosh was a historian who quite rightly said that, you know, historians are often have to be quite creative. They have to join the dots. They have to read between the lines. Um, they recognise the open-ended nature of the process, but what a good historian does is pull together all those pieces of information. And that's the creativity, that's, that's the creative part of it. So that's context, whatever's necessary to give that piece of work credibility, and sometimes within that you will find surprises. It's like detective work, and that's kind of what you are, a detective.